are looking live at launch pad 6, site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where a Soyuz 2.1A booster stands fully fueled, ready to launch just under 20 minutes from now to send an unpiloted progress resupply vehicle to the International Space Station on a cargo delivery run to do deliver 2.8 tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the Expedition 71 crew aboard the orbital outpost. Good evening from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room. As you are looking at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on an overcast morning, it is Thursday morning in Baikonur. Launch time is uh, just under 19 and a half minutes from now, the exact launch time for this progress resupply vehicle, 10.20 and 18 seconds p.m. Central Time, which is 8.20 and 18 seconds a.m. on Thursday morning in Baikonur. It is 72 degrees in the Central Asian launch site. Uh, again, overcast skies. The Progress vehicle was fueled several hours ago after a State Commission meeting. It is ready to roll to an 8-minute, 49-second trip to its preliminary orbit, at which point uh, the Progress itself will separate from the third stage of the three-stage Soyuz booster, will deploy its solar arrays and navigational antennas, and then begin a pre-programmed two-day journey to the International Space Station, where engine firings will first elevate the altitude altitude of the progress to match that of the International Space Station uh, for an automated arrival in the vicinity of the orbital outpost early Saturday morning and an automated docking to the aft port of the Zvezda service module scheduled at 12.56 a.m. Central Time on Saturday morning. The uh, Soyuz uh, booster and uh, the progress rolled out uh, to uh, Site 31 from its integration facility early Monday morning uh, was raised uh, hydraulically to its vertical state to allow engineers to complete electrical connections and fuel line connections. And as you can see, the gantry arms uh, spread about 30 minutes ago to expose the rocket. You can see uh, up against the side of the Soyuz booster, there are two umbilical towers uh, that provide uh, the replenishment of fuel to the first stage of the uh, Soyuz booster. The first of those two umbilicals will retract at about the 35-second mark in the countdown, followed about 20 seconds later at the 15-second mark by the retraction of the second umbilical that will initiate the auto-sequence start for engine ignition. The cargo on board uh, the uh, Progress vehicle breaks down to 5,778 pounds of cargo, or about 2.8 tons. The uh, breakdown of that is 2,094 pounds of propellant, 926 pounds of water, 110 pounds of nitrogen, and 2,648 pounds of dry goods and supplies. Once again, uh, the arrival of the Progress uh, to a docking at the aft port of the Zvezda service module is expected on Saturday morning at 12.56 a.m. Central Time, 1.56 a.m. Eastern Time. On board the International Space Station at this hour, the uh, Expedition 71 crew and the Starliner astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, are asleep at this hour. They will receive news of the Progress launch once they are awakened a few hours from now to begin their Thursday activities on board uh, the International Laboratory. The uh, countdown, which has uh, been proceeding uh, flawlessly to this point, uh, will uh, have the final milestones as such at about the T-minus seven minute mark in the countdown, or about nine minutes from now. A launch key will be inserted into the launch bunker. It transitions the launch sequence into an automated mode. At the T-minus five and a half minute mark, the launch control uh, uh, controllers down in Baikonur will report uh, that the range at Baikonur is clear and that the Soyuz rocket is ready to begin its journey. About a minute and a half later, onboard systems will be switched to is what is called onboard control, and uh, strip charts and other recorders will be activated uh, to record all of the data of the Soyuz rocket's ascent to its preliminary orbit to deliver the Progress resupply vehicle. The fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines will be purged with nitrogen to 
fireproof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer from the base of the rocket. And then at the T-minus 2 minute 45 second mark into the countdown, the booster uh, for the first stage uh, will be pressurized for flight, optimizing the flow of fuel, helping to add structural support to the rocket. That ground propellant feed uh, to the uh, Soyuz booster will be terminated at about the T-minus 1 minute 30 second mark, about 30 seconds before the Soyuz is placed on internal power uh, to begin the automated, uh, uh, the automated sequence start for engine ignition and liftoff. Again, an overcast morning on a Thursday morning at the launch site in the Central Asian desert. But everything is proceeding well. The rocket is fully fueled, ready to begin its journey to send uh, the unpiloted Progress resupply ship to its preliminary orbit. The ascent milestones as they uh, occur, that you'll hear uh, the calls uh, as we uh, proceed through uh, the ascent timeline. At about the 1 minute 58 second mark after launch, we will see first stage separation. The side boosters uh, will separate uh, from the Soyuz booster. That will be followed about a minute later by the jettisoning of the launch shroud that envelops uh, the Progress vehicle itself. Second stage shutdown of uh, the Soyuz engine will occur at the 4 minute 37 second mark into the countdown, followed 10 seconds later by second stage separation. Just a few seconds later, the third stage skirt will be jettisoned. Uh, the third stage engine uh, will be up and running at that point, uh, firing for about four minutes and nine seconds until it shuts down at the eight minute 46 second mark into the ascent, three seconds before third stage separation. The uh, Soyuz uh, will have then deposited the progress into its preliminary orbit, and within seconds, the commands will be issued to deploy the Progress's solar arrays and navigational antennas to begin its uh, two-day journey uh, toward the International Space Station. At the time of launch at uh, 10.20 and 18 seconds p.m. Central Time, the International Space Station will be flying 260 miles just north of the border of Egypt and Sudan. And again, the progress uh, will be then on an automated pre-programmed engine firing sequence uh, to raise its altitude to eventually match that of the International Space Station. And then uh, late Friday night into early Saturday morning to close in on the neighborhood of the International Space Station uh, for a fly around of the station. And uh, it will then match uh, the forward docking port of the Progress to that of the aft port of the Zvezda service module, which was vacated on Monday by the departure of the older 87 Progress vehicle that was subsequently deorbited for a uh, harmless uh, entry where it burned up into the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. The uh, countdown uh, continues to proceed uh, on track, just 11 and a half minutes until launch. You can see uh, the venting of uh, propellant from the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster. We're about uh, four minutes or so away from the point at which the launch key will be inserted into the launch bunker to transition the final minutes of the countdown into an automated mode. Here in the final minutes of the countdown, uh, you're looking now at a uh, view from a balcony camera overlooking the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Korolyov, outside of Moscow. At the point of spacecraft separation, about eight minutes and 49 seconds after launch, those flight controllers will take over uh, the rest of uh, the flight of the Progress vehicle as uh, it uh, makes its two-day journey to the International Space Station.
Just inside 10 minutes now until the launch of the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster and the Progress 89 resupply ship, once again uh, poised to deliver 2.8 tons of food, fuel, and supplies to the uh, crew members on board the International Space Station. T-minus uh, nine minutes and counting. You can see a glimmer of sunshine glistening on the upper stage of the uh, Soyuz booster. The uh, Progress resupply ship is encapsulated in that upper stage. And again, uh, the launch shroud jettisoning to expose the Progress itself during powered flight will occur just over three minutes into uh, the flight path of the Progress which will arc out to the northeast from the Baikonur Cosmodrome into an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. On Saturday morning, following its docking uh, to the aft port of the Zvezda service module, the Russian cosmonauts on board the station, led by Station Commander Alek Kononenko, along with Nikolai Chub and Alexander Grabenkin, uh, will um, conduct leak checks on both sides of the uh, docking interface at uh, the aft port of Zvezda before the hatches uh, will be opened to uh, allow them to begin the process of unloading uh, the cargo from the Progress vehicle itself. Those conversations from the blockhouse in Baikonur from launch controllers as we pass the seven minute mark into the countdown. The vehicle now being transitioned uh, to the uh, launch sequence for its automated mode from this point on. A little over a minute uh, before a final check of the range down in Baikonur. T-minus six minutes and counting, that launch key now has been inserted into the launch bunker, transitioning the launch sequence into automated mode. Everything continue, uh, continues to proceed smoothly towards an on-time launch at 10, 20, and 18 seconds p.m. Central Time, 8, 20, and 18 seconds a.m. at the launch site in Baikonur on Thursday morning.
кладовка. Now inside uh, the five minute mark until launch. This is the point at which the uh, fuel lines and other elements of the rocket's engines are being purged with nitrogen, fireproofing them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer from the base of the Soyuz 2.1A booster. Again, you are looking at uh, Pad 6, Launch Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan as we approach the four-minute mark until liftoff. T-minus 3 minutes 35 seconds until launch. Just under a minute uh, before the first stage will be pressurized for flight. T-minus 2 minutes 40 seconds until launch. The uh, fuel and oxidizer tanks now being pressurized. Coming up on the T-minus two-minute mark. Mark T-minus two minutes. Coming up on the termination of the ground propellant feed to the rocket. The Soyuz 2.1A booster about to go on internal power. And we've passed the T-minus one minute mark. About 20 seconds or so away from the retraction of the first of the two umbilicals buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz booster. There's the retraction of the first umbilical. The second umbilical will retract in about 10 seconds to initiate the engine sequence start. We have engine sequence start. 
engines revving up to full throttle and liftoff. Liftoff of the 89th Progress resupply ship to the International Space Station. The vehicle has cleared the tower. Thrust on the first stage engines. The Soyuz booster arcing out to the northeast from the launch site in the Central Asian Desert. Good reports from the blockhouse in Baikonur. Good stability on the vehicle. Good first stage engine performance. Pitch, roll, and yaw, all nominal. One minute, ten seconds into the flight, everything reported uh, nominal so far. The blockhouse in Baikonur reporting good structural parameters for the vehicle, good first stage engine performance. Standing by for first stage separation. And we have confirmation of first stage separation. Second stage engine up and running. Just to recap, uh, an on-time liftoff for the Soyuz 2.1A booster. It occurred at 10.20 and 18 seconds p.m. Central Time, 8.20 and 18 seconds a.m. in Baikonur on Thursday morning. The uh, Soyuz booster flying straight and narrow on its second stage performance. Good uh, stability on the vehicle. Good engine performance from the second stage. And we have uh, the launch shroud jettison. Just over three minutes into the flight, about five minutes and 40 seconds of powered flight remaining. Two hundred twenty seconds into the flight, continuing to receive good reports from the blockhouse in Baikonur. The vehicle is stable. The uh, Soyuz booster is uh, firing its second stage engine in great shape. This view now from a camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz booster, looking back down the stack. Good pitch, yaw, and roll stability on the vehicle. About four and a half minutes into the flight. Everything looking good. Second stage shutdown reported.
The third stage skirt has been jettisoned. Third stage engine up and running. The vehicle is stable. Good reports continuing to come in. About three minutes of powered flight remaining for the Soyuz booster to deliver the Progress resupply vehicle into its preliminary orbit. Good third stage engine performance reported. And good control on the vehicle coming in from the blockhouse in Baikonur. Good pitch roll and yaw program. Good stability on the vehicle. About two minutes and change remaining in powered flight. Once again, uh, third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation scheduled at about the eight minute, 49 second mark. That will be followed in short order by the command to deploy the solar arrays and navigational antennas on progress. Seven minutes into the flight, about one minute, 49 seconds of powered flight remaining. The vehicle continues uh, to climb uphill, very stable, good pitch roll and yaw program, good stability, all the parameters are in great shape. We're coming up on the eight minute mark into the flight, less than a minute of powered flight remaining. About 30 seconds of powered flight remaining. Everything continues uh, to perform in a nominal fashion. Third stage engine tailing off as planned. Good pitch roll in your program, good stability as we stand by for third stage separation. And we have third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. And the command has now been issued for solar array deploy that you see occurring. And we have confirmation of solar array deploy and navigational antenna deploy as planned. The progress now in its preliminary orbit, beginning its two-day journey to reach the International Space Station early Saturday morning.
And we see our first view from the external television camera on the Progress vehicle that will come into play in earnest on Saturday morning, showing uh, the closure rate of uh, the Progress to the International Space Station, its distance from the station, and its rate of uh, closure as uh, it uh, makes its way toward an automated docking to the aft port of the Zvezda service module. This is Mission Control Houston as you look at a view from a balcony camera uh, overlooking the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow, where flight controllers there have now taken over control of the flight of the unpiloted Progress resupply vehicle to the International Space Station. Launch occurred on time at 10.20 and 18 seconds p.m. Central Time. 8.20 and 18 seconds a.m. Baikonur time on Thursday morning. All of the ascent events uh, unfolded in perfect fashion. About uh, 8 minutes and 49 seconds after launch, the progress separated from the third stage of the Soyuz 2.1A booster, deployed its solar arrays and navigational antennas, and is now well on its way for an automated docking to the aft port of the Zvezda service module on Saturday morning. Our coverage uh, will uh, begin on Saturday at 1 a.m. Eastern Time for a docking scheduled at 1.56 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday morning. The progress uh, poised to deliver 2.8 tons of food, fuel, and supplies to the Expedition 71 crew aboard the International Space Station. But for now, that'll wrap up our coverage for this evening, a perfect launch of the progress now well on its way to the International Space Station and an arrival in the wee hours Saturday morning. Join us again on Saturday for our coverage of Progress Rendezvous and docking. Until then, we're signing off for now. This is Mission Control Houston.